What's up, ladies? My name's VP. Tell you what, I've got the brains. You've got the looks. Let's make lots of money. So in most of the videos that you may have seen so far, most of my early videos, I spend a lot of time talking about tools and concepts and ideas that I really don't like when it comes to Forex trading. And the reason I do that is to get all of those things out of your personal trading system before we start moving on to things that I really do like. And these are two of my absolute favorite currency pairs to trade. I have had more success with these two currency pairs, I think, more than any other currency pair as far as the eight majors go. I don't know this for sure, but I know it's 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 a very noticeable difference when I look back at trading these two pairs compared to trading everything else. I do pretty good across the board, but uh, these two have really vaulted me into that next level, and I hope they can do the same for you. So we're going to talk about this. In this video, I'm going to talk about all three of the currencies that are involved in those two pairs. So the euro, the British pound, and the Swiss franc. And I'm going to show why both of those pairs the euro pound and the pound swissy are really great options to trade. I'm going to go to my charts at the very end and kind of prove to you what I'm talking about. I mean, we're not going to go over individual trades or anything like that, but from, from a very macro zoomed out view, I'm going to show you how well these things move and give you a little warning at the end. You're going to want to stick around for that because the whole middle of the video is going to be explaining why these things are so great. And at the very end, I'm going to show you two ways that even if you trade these currencies the way I do, you can really screw it up if you're not careful. So stick around for that. So if you guys are fans of the No Nonsense Forex YouTube channel, uh, welcome back. You're going to love this video. Uh, if you are brand new, I'm going to reference other videos I've made in this video. I'm sure I can, I can already tell you it's going to happen, so I might as well tell you what those are. I'm going to link all of these down below. And they're all very important videos to see. So after you're done with this one, if you want to go watch these, I would recommend it. First off, the video I made on the euro dollar. It is the single most traded currency pair on the planet, and it really shouldn't be. Um, there's, there's, there are many reasons for this, and I'm going to talk about some of that uh, coming up real soon here. So definitely check that video out when you get the time. The Big Banks video is essential. If you don't understand why price moves up and down, because most people have no idea, uh, you don't have a great shot in this market, period. Um, that is absolutely essential. If you're coming to this channel for the first time, it's always the very first video I recommend you watch, and I'll link that down below too. I'm a trend trader, and if you want to understand why and why I am very anti-reversal, uh, you're going to want to see that, because uh, I will reference the fact that I'm a trend trader in this video too, I am sure. And then I host something called the Forex Q&A Podcast. And in episode four, I talk about how many currency pairs you should actually be trading. It's probably more than you think. It's probably more than you currently trade right now. And then in every trading video I make, I am always talking about trading the daily chart and the daily chart alone. And the reasons why are going to be found in episode three of the podcast. So, it's going to be a pretty heavy description section. There's going to be a lot there. I'm going to link all of these down below so you can just go right to it. Um, but I recommend you watch them all. You will be a very different trader with a very different mindset once you're done with all these. And seeing as how most traders lose money, that's going to be a really good thing. So, let's move on. I want you to understand, especially if you're new, I'm a trend trader. All right? Understand that right away. I'm a purely technical trader. I don't like news. I avoid Forex news every chance I can because I have a really good charting system that tells me where price is going to go, and I rely on that. The last thing I want to have is some crazy Forex news screwing up my beautiful technical trade. And this is one of the biggest reasons I really like trading these two currency pairs, and it's one of the biggest reasons that I don't like trading pairs involving the United States dollar. Now, I do trade those pairs, make no mistake, uh, but I've also been doing this for 10 years. And I do have success with dollar pairs, but not nearly as much as I do with others. Uh, the biggest issues I have with dollar pairs, and I've been over this in other videos, but if you are brand new, let's talk about those. First off, the big banks love to manipulate dollar pairs. How come? 
because they are super popular. Everybody, for some reason, everybody just decided, no matter where you are on the globe, I really want to trade pairs that involve the United States dollar. And that's all I want to do. And the banks know that. They're going to go where the most money is, and they're going to manipulate price left and right. The whole idea to make money and to get yourself off of the big bank's radar is to avoid pairs that involve the United States dollar. On top of that, the news events that involve the United States dollar move those currency pairs more than any other pairs that I see. And that is very unfortunate if you are currently in a currency pair involving the United States dollar because things like non-farm payrolls, for example, whenever interest rates might be moving but probably aren't, no matter what interest rates are doing, anytime there's news on that, the banks have carte blanche to make that thing go crazy. And if you're currently in a trade that involves the United States dollar, you really have to take some measures to protect yourself now because you have no idea where this thing's going to go. I might be 150 pips up on the pound dollar, and instead of just letting it do what it's going to do, now all of a sudden I have to kind of play damage control and move my stop losses, move my take profits, because I could easily get all 150 of those pips wiped out, even on news that goes my way. That is just what the banks do. You've seen this happen before if you've traded these pairs. You know what I'm talking about. It's very frustrating sometimes. And on top of that, especially now, my God, even the day-to-day -day news, if Donald Trump puts out a tweet, and I don't care about anything he says about anything, but the media does, and for some stupid reason the markets do, and they will react violently. And these tweets and these announcements come out of nowhere. And especially now that we're in a trade war with China, it's just going to happen more often. Yet another reason to really stay away from these things. Because even if you're a Forex news trader, which I don't recommend you do at all, there's no way you can trade any of this. It's way too un unpredictable. You have no idea who, what he's going to say, what effect it's going to have, and then what the banks decide to do with price. How do they interpret it? You don't know any of these things. Therefore, you have no control. And why would you want to trade currency pairs that you have very little control in? It just doesn't make any sense. The right move, especially right now, is to get into cross pairs. Cross pairs are fantastic, yet so many traders out there don't even explore this territory, and I don't understand why. Um, cross pairs, I mean, you're going to see different definitions of what they are. I describe them as any combination of the eight major currencies that do not involve the United States dollar. This is where the majority of my money is made. And it's really for the reasons I described earlier. But what I want to do right now is go into all three of those currencies individually and tell you why I like them the way I do. And then we'll talk about the actual pairs and why I like those the way I do. First off, let's start with the euro. A lot of reasons I like trading the euro. First off, it's just not affected by the dollar that much. The euro dollar pair, of course, is going to move up and down with dollar news. But the euro as a standalone currency doesn't care too deeply what the United States does, at least not right now. And that's really great. And the news events that the euro has within it are pretty scattered. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, the European Union, which is what uses the euro, has many nations within it. And some are much stronger than others. Of course, Germany's at the top, and then France, and then Spain, Italy, on the way down. But because it's not one nation, and there's so many nations inside of it, when news, good or bad, happens to one country, it doesn't move the euro as adversely as, let's say, Canada would move if really bad news came out uh, for their economy. If something really bad happened to Canadian GDP numbers, for example, the CAD's going to drop pretty hard. If really bad GDP numbers came out for France, the euro is going to move, but not nearly as much. Uh, and then you have very few pieces of news every month that actually affects the euro as a whole. So usually when the head of the ECB is talking, so when Mario Draghi comes up and has something to say, that's a really good time to make sure that you're not trading the euro. And if you are, you have taken measures to protect yourself. But this is fine because this does not happen often. You know when it's coming and you can plan accordingly. Mario Draghi is not the type to start tweeting something crazy and making the price of the euro go all over the place. You know, you don't have to worry about that here. So these are the reasons why I really love trading the euro. Every chance I get a signal, I'm on it. Now, on the pound, the pound is just its own dog. You know, it just doesn't correlate with anything. 
as you guys know, if you've been trading this market, the euro and the Swissy kind of go up and down together. Um, and then you'll have times where the United States dollar and the yen will do the same thing because they're both known as safe haven currencies. And then you'll see the United States dollar and the Canadian dollar move kind of in tandem with each other sometimes too because they're both North American currencies. If you give a currency pair a reason to correlate and not go anywhere and move up and down at the same time, they're going to do it. But the pound just doesn't care what anybody else is doing. <laughs> it's, it's its own thing. And because of that, these the pairs that are involved with the CAD very rarely stagnate. They don't go sideways and do nothing because going sideways and doing nothing is really bad for us trend traders. We want things to move. And pound pairs certainly do like to move. And for some reason for me, the news on the pound is very easy to follow. I know which news events are going to affect it and which ones aren't. In the future, guys, I'm going to make, and this is going to be the distant future probably, I'm going to make an individual video on every single one of the eight major currencies. And in those videos, I'm going to go over which news events are the ones you really have to look out for. But in the meantime, if you guys just do a little bit of homework and backtrack and find out which of these events really move the pound, it's not hard to see. You, know, you can go do this right now. Uh, but knowing when those news events are coming, you know, I can almost just, I don't even need my calendar anymore. I almost know when they're happening. And uh, it's great because I have much more control over my trade now because I know when it's time to get out of the pool or when it's time to make my adjustments. I uh, really like the pound for this reason. Moving on to the Swissy. Now, the Swissy is pretty nice. It's uh, the most... I, I put this down. I might backtrack on this. The most news-neutral major currency. I mean, any news events that come out for the Swissy really don't ever affect it. I mean, you might have to pay a little bit of attention when the Swiss National Bank comes out and has something to say, but they almost never do. And the reason I wanted to backtrack a little bit is because the yen is actually probably just as news-neutral as the Swissy is. You can sleep through yen news. You can pretty much sleep through Swiss franc news, too. But that's great. That's one less thing I have to worry about as a technical trader. Now, it does move with the euro. Um, sometimes it correlates with the euro. Sometimes it doesn't. It did a lot more in the past, um, but it still has a tendency to do that. And so if really good news for the euro comes out, for example, the Swissy is going to move too, but not as much as the euro is going to move. So I also like very little variance in my news. And the Swissy really helps out with that, too, because even if it's going to move with the euro, it's not going to move as much as the euro does. And you just, this one, sometimes you look at currencies and you're just like, why is it doing what it's doing? I don't understand this. There was no news that came out for the Aussie. Why is it going crazy? And the answer is usually the big banks. Um, but no matter what the reason is, it still sucks. You know, you want predictability. You want things to move in a nice smooth trend. And sometimes currencies just don't feel like doing it that day. Um, but you almost never see that with the Swissy. Or you see it less than you do with the other eight currencies. So um, I'm sorry, with the other seven currencies of the eight majors. So it's for this reason that I, uh, I really enjoy trading the Swiss franc as well. And it's even better now that it's not pegged to the euro because it can actually move a little bit more independently, which opens the door for you know, six, seven other currency pairs for us to trade. Really, really nice. So you take these three currencies and you put them together and magic starts happening. So let's talk about those pairs themselves. So why do I like the euro pound as much as I do? Well, first off, it is almost always the slowest of the eight majors. Now, if you guys have seen the ATR video, it has probably the lowest ATR of the eight majors almost all of the time. And that's nice because you can actually control it to a degree. And it does not care about USD news. Uh, I mean, if non-farm payrolls are happening and I have a euro pound trade open, I can pretty much just not worry about it, which is great because non-farm payrolls is the single largest Forex event of the month. It happens at 530 in the morning Pacific Standard Time, and I do not want to be awake at that time. I don't want to have to sit there and worry about anything that's going on there. And with a euro pound trade, you really don't have to. Pretty sweet. Uh, it rarely stagnates. It's been stagnating lately, but that's fine because in a three-year span, which I'm about to show you, it almost never does. It's always moving somewhere. And so the combination of being nice and slow and easy to control and almost always trending somewhere is a really, really great combination. And yet there's traders out there that have never, ever traded this pair before. I just don't understand it. 
And as a result of all these things, my win percentage on this thing is high. If I'm getting a buy signal on the euro pound and on the euro dollar, I'm not going to split my money in between the two. I'm putting all of it in the euro pound just because it's in my best interest to do so because there's a much better chance I'm going to make money. Simple as that, guys. I mean, at this point, are you at least somewhat convinced that this is a currency pair that needs to be part of your trading? Because it really, really does. Let's, uh, let's talk about the other one. The pound Swissy uh, actually moves faster than the euro pound. If the euro pound just moves way too slow for you, well, I guess that's fine. I'll trade this one. It, it does have a higher ATR almost all the time than the euro pound does, uh, but it also just does not care about dollar news. Awesome. <laughs> Always. Last thing you want to do is have to worry about what Trump's doing or what any of our goofy little news events are going to affect your trade. And uh, you get to avoid all that, which is really great. And this one flows even better than the euro pound. It stagnates less, it trends more. Awesome. And I've told you in the past that if you want to make money, you have to stay away from the big banks and you need to be under the radar. And this pair is super under the radar. I, I don't know anybody that actually trades it, uh, at least not with any regularity. And that's crazy to me because look at all of these wonderful reasons why you should trade this pair. Uh, I just don't get it. I don't know. That's fine. More money for me. But uh, if you went in on this, I suggest you put this pair in there too. So all of this being said, uh, as much as I love those three currencies, you know, why do I not trade the Euro Swissy? That's the one combination that uh, we haven't talked about. Well, there's a reason why. For the longest time, they used to correlate with each other, and you just couldn't get any momentum out of it, and that sucked. But we're, it's finally moving well again, and that's great. It has really opened the door. For traders. I mean, if you're going to trade the Aussie Swissy, you might as well just trade the Euro Aussie. It's the same thing, only going the opposite direction. But nowadays, it's not. You know, these two currencies have distanced themselves enough to where even the Euro Swissy is finally moving well again. And I am trading it. I just don't have a big enough sample size to go on. It has not vaulted itself into my favorites list because I avoided trading it for so long. And even in that video, um, even at that point, I still generally avoided it because I just didn't know when they were going to start correlating again. And I, I have no problems just taking this one out of my trading, but it's creeping its way back. I just don't have enough results to say, hey, I really like trading this or I really don't like trading this. So that's the only reason I didn't mention it. Uh, but it's still something that even though I said back in episode four of the podcast to not use it, you can probably start letting it back in. Just proceed with caution. All right, so let's uh, let's go ahead and go to my charts, and I'm going to show you what I mean when I say how well some of these currency pairs move. So here we are at the euro pound daily chart, and I have zoomed out. Let's see, it is late August 2018. This is uh, about a two and one quarter year sample size of what I'm talking about here. And this right here was Brexit. And so ever since then, really, you get nice, sustained moves all the way across. These are really nice trends. It may look like consolidation from afar, but is it really? Let's see. Top to bottom, about 540 pips. For a, pound, for a, a pair like this, that's phenomenal. There's lots of money to be made here, here, and here. Really big move up, and then it started getting into a little bit of a tighter range. Even here, guys, if I'm going to measure top-ish to bottom-ish, 325 pips, you're not going to get a lot of big wins in there, but there are plenty of wins to be made in a range like that. The only time where this thing totally sucked was right here. Let's see the range on that. And that was just recent. Yeah, this is too tight of a range for us to make money. My volume indicator just didn't pick up on it fast enough, um, but that's fine. I mean, you know, boo-hoo. If you get one little shit range like that in the span of two and a half years, you're doing really good. Apart from that, this thing is always moving and always giving you chances to make money. And you get to avoid dollar news all the while. Pretty darn nice. Let's go to the pound Swissy pound Swissy daily chart. Now you'll see in a lot of ways 
you know, at least early on, it was moving in the opposite direction. The euro pound was, which was fine. You got your Brexit candle here. Am I right? Yeah. Here and then, I mean, all the way across, just plenty of opportunity. Almost never ran in place and went sideways. Um, and you'll notice, too, like I said before, the ranges are bigger. So let's take kind of a small consolidation range, like maybe here. Even there, 450 pips. Plenty of opportunity to make money there. And didn't really have that terrible little consolidation phase where it just did nothing for about a month. I don't see it. I mean, I was making money all the way up and down through this whole time. Really, really good. And uh, most traders don't trade this pair. Okay, fine, whatever. Uh, but you can see, and you can do this with any currency pair you want, and you can kind of get an idea of how well it uh, it's going to serve you as a trend trader. Um, but very few whipsaws in this whole thing. Just really nice, smooth, wonderful trends all across the board. And uh, a two and a half year sample size is plenty. Things can always change, as is always the case. But you know, in the last two and a half years, and you can you can keep going back if you want. Uh, this this sucker moves. Really, really good pair to trade. So uh, the one thing we have not talked about yet when it comes to these pairs is the warning. And this is pretty important that you listen to this part because I just got done telling you how great these pairs are. But you can easily screw this up. And if you do, you're going to blame me because I've been hyping these pairs up so much even though you lost money. Understand this. Do not wait for one to confirm the other. Sometimes the euro and the Swissy move in tandem. So when this happens, you're going to get a long signal on the euro pound very soon after you get a short signal on the pound Swissy. This happens sometimes. And if you're getting them moving in tandem like this to where you're getting signals very close together, don't make the mistake I did. I said, okay, the euro pound and the pound Swissy are really close to giving me a signal. I'm going to wait until they both say go. And in doing that, I missed out on some really, really great trades. I don't get mad when I lose. I get mad when I miss out on winners. And that was happening. If you trade both of these pairs, you're going to see what I'm talking about. Just remember this and put it in the back of your mind that I told you, as soon as one gives you a signal, go for it. Don't wait for the other one to follow. Also, don't trade these both at the same time. Um... Because what's going to happen is you are going to be over leveraged in the pound. All right. I'm going to make the risk video really soon here, guys. But just know that let's say you are somebody who only puts 1% risk in every trade. And that's, that's your money management. If you're trading both these, you now have 2% in the pound. If something goes sideways in the pound, that's going to hurt because you have over leveraged yourself. Um, just be really careful here. Trade one. If you have a signal on the euro pound, take it and then ignore any signals you get on the pound Swissy because you're essentially doubling up here. When I do make that risk video, um, it's going to be a big one and it's going to go over this idea. But I hope you understand what I'm saying here. If you are somebody who makes sure that you only have 1% of risk out there at any given time, but you're in two pound trades that both have 1% risk, you have over leveraged yourself. Um, so just be really careful not to do collusion. Be cautious of dollar pairs, always. Um, you know, whether you have to take your the amount of money you trade on these pairs down to half, um, do that, especially when you're first starting out. Um, you're going to want to. You're going to take more losses on these than you will cross pairs. Trade more cross pairs. <laughs> That's where the money is. That's where my money is. And if you guys are attempting to trade like me, and a lot of you are, um, this is a a big part of how you're going to trade. Uh, pay really close attention to these two pairs, though. Uh, they are killers. They are wonderful pairs to trade, and I think over time will provide a really nice source of income for you. Uh, but just don't trade them both at once, and don't trade them during the, the week before and the week after a Brexit vote, for the love of God. I think that should go without saying, but I would be remiss if I didn't mention that part. So uh, subscribe, guys, if you haven't already. Who else is talking about the things I'm talking about? Uh, nobody. I really wish when I was starting out I had that one honest friend that had experience and had success that could tell me what to do and what not to do. Uh, and now you have that. Nobody else is going to tell you this. They're all going to tell you the same stuff works over and over again, and you're going to wonder why you're running in place or why you're losing money. 
Uh, this is the place to be, guys. Check out all those videos I have listed below, and you are going to learn so much about this market that you did not know before. Because frankly, information like this just doesn't exist anywhere else. All right, guys? See you in the next video. In the meantime, go out there and get it.